Hello, I'm Dave. Welcome to my Technical Notes channel. There's no doubt that development of a project system using development boards is best done with a development board proper. There's a Wemos Lowlin 32 board and a Wemos D1 mini board. They make life very easy. In both cases, there's a UART on the board and there's a regulator. This one has a battery charge circuitry, etc. LEDs, uh, connector for the micro USB. Similarly, this one here has a UART and um, pull up resistors and a regulator so they make life very very convenient for development purposes quick turnaround and when your code is finished it's really nice to cut down on the amount of componentry once the program is running largely the uart uh, is redundant and a few other certainly the battery charging unless you're using a battery powered um, project and the best thing to do after development is to transfer your project to one of these um, let's call it a breakout board there's nothing special on it is literally the ESP32 module with some pull-up resistors and a boot and a reset switch here so that's an ESP32 version. Here's another ESP32 version. Beware if you purchase one of these, they never have the switches or the pull-up resistors soldered. They're not usually supplied with pull-up resistors either. Um, so there again, they're a bare board with the pins brought out to these um, twin headers and they're silk screened at the back. I'll show you the back of this one. Silk screened with all of the pins on them. So those are ESP32 versions and here's an ESP8266 version. These breakout boards do tend to come with the pull-up resistors um, pre-soldered but not the header pins and um, they're a bare board minus the ESP8266 and on the back there's provision for a three pin regulator should you require to fit one. So ordinarily all of these boards would be supplied with 3.3 uh, volts. So how do you go about programming them? Well actually very easy. I'll use the ESP32 as, as an example. So reminder that the ESP32 board has got a UART on board which has taken the USB serial data to into the UART converting that to um, the levels and the protocol required for the ESP32. So the the really easy solution to programming an ESP32, a bare board, or, or an ESP8266 is to get hold of one of these UARTs, USB to UART. There's the same chip, pretty much the same chip, package is different. Plugs into the USB port. Uh, this one here is switchable between 5 volts and 3.3 volts so when you're programming an ESP32 or an 8266 it must provide 3.3 um, volts or you can provide power to the board separately 3.3 volts. Connections we require are ground, VCC, transmit data and receive data and that's all we need to do. Um, we plug the UART into the USB port. Have the PC made connection. And on the back of the board 
is ground, transmit data, receive data, and VCC. So what I've done is connect ground to ground, VCC to 3.3 volts. VCC is that historic term voltage collector to collector. It's probably better just calling it supply voltage or VDD, drain to drain, or whatever the device inside that ESP32 is. But historically called VCC, so 3.3 volts ground. Transmit data of this device, this is the one that's going to output data, goes to receive data of the UART and receive data of the ESP32 or 8266, it's both synonymous goes to the transmit data of the UART and that's all you need to do that's the connection for programming the device now to begin programming you have to hold the boot switch on so you will press and hold the boot switch I won't do it yet but I, well, I can do but at the beginning of the program you press and hold the boot switch momentary press the reset button and then release the boot switch and now that's ready to receive a new program by the way there are these new boards on the market which i quite like you can this is a, a looks like a super sized breakout board you can solder an esp32 in there and get all of the connections of the ESP32 out here. There are no connections over here, it's just this inner row of pins that are connected around the periphery of the device. But it makes for a very useful um, breakout board. But the good thing about these boards is their 70p UK pounds is um, turn them over and you get the ESP8266 version so solder an ESP8266 um, 12F will be the device part just the bare unit there and again you have access to all of the pins that you would, you would use most of the pins you require are already down the left and right hand side of the device these are on the whole superfluous for most operations most of the pins can be reassigned so very useful it's got provision for a relay there I hadn't noticed so ESP32 on that side of the board and ESP8266 on that side of the board right, next I'm going to open a program that uh, I'll program this device so that it prints out hello world on the serial port so there is the program and now i'm going to um, select the board type and i'm going to select uh, just the straight esp32 dev module i've selected the right serial port which is the uart but when it connects it creates a um, the PC assigns it a COM port. This one's been assigned COM port 18. And compile it. Now I won't, I won't initiate the um, ESP programming yet. You'll watch the insert of the video as it compiles, because it takes a while to compile on my PC mainly because I haven't removed it from the virus checking. Right, so now it says trying to connect. So I'm now going to press the boot, the reset, release the reset and release the boot. There we go. And it's programming the device. It's already completed. So if I now go to tools, serial monitor, now the ESP32 will not start unless you press the reset button. That's the other disadvantage of these development or breakout boards. 
the press reset hello world there you go so it was as easy as that so that is how you program and the process for the sp8266 is broadly the same you have to set the right conditions and the breakout boards do that with the pull-up resistors connecting vcc to 3.3 volts to the supply pin vcc ground to ground and the transmit data of the UART goes to the received data of the ESP and the, the received data of the UART goes to the transmit data of the ESP. That's your connection as if you were connecting a development board. It's the same connection process, albeit a little um, less neat. There are many types of UARTs on the market. Um, all you need, I bought this one because it came with the uh, with the cables. Um, um, ultra low price, so when your project's finished, you can c program a bare ESP and um, your project is exactly the same, minus all the peripheral devices that go with the development board. And the only thing you need to provide for your ESP project is a 3.3 volt power supply which are freely available in most most suppliers um, very very low cost less than a quarter of a US dollar in most cases hope you find that useful that's how you program an ESP32 it really is simple and uh, I would say don't be put off by it you can transfer your projects to the ESP32 quite easily. Here's a reminder of the connections. So select 3.3 volts on your USB UART, either via a switch or a jumper, and then connect uh, USB UART 3.3 volts to 3.3 volts on the ESP32 or 8266, ground to ground, Transmit data of the USB UART goes to the received data of the ESP and received data of the USB UART goes to transmit data of the ESP. Here's a reminder of the preparing the ESP device for programming. Press and hold the IO0 button, sometimes called the boot button. Press and hold that and then press the, receipt, the reset button momentarily, release the reset and then release the boot button and then it's ready to receive the program. Here's an example of a very simple program, nothing more to be said about that. So programming the ESP devices is easy to accomplish using a low cost USB to UART converter. Connections are straightforward, as shown there, and select a standard board type for either the ESP32 or the ESP8266. And a good programming rate is 115 200 board, I find. You can go faster. Hope you found this video useful and um, I hope you enjoy programming your ESP devices. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful.